Scotty S3 model works. I know I haven't done an update in a while, but I am back. So, um, today I wanted to show you guys the, uh, do a little uh, inbox review of Rodin 72nd scale Felix Stowe F2A, World War I flying boat. Beautiful box art. Have a look at the instruction sheet in a second. And we'll take a look at some of these sprues. Here we have the F sprue. Um, this is the port and starboard left side wings, uh, the beaching trolley, portions of the tail, flight deck, the hole that covers the flight deck, um, the intermediary wing pieces, top and bottom. This is the cupola piece for this particular aircraft, which was the only flying boat that had this particular configuration, this uh, oil drum that this poor gunner gets to stand up in on six-hour missions over the North Atlantic. Fun, 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 fun. Okay, let's see what's next. I have four sprues. Just lay them out like a card deck there. These are all of uh, engine components and uh, smaller pickup type items. Um, headers, rigging points, intermediary, uh, the three struts for those large uh, 95 foot wingspan wings, uh, the Lewis guns, the magazines for the Lewis guns, cupola pieces. So, got four of those as well. Mm, got a couple of these bad boys. These are nice and neat. Pretty good detail on those. Um, those are the uh, Rolls Royce. D12 Eagle 8 engines. They're supposed to be little kits within themselves. Nice big radiators. Um, I'm not quite ready to start this build, so I'm still looking at some uh, PE and maybe even... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's a pretty, pretty intense kit. And uh, I have a couple, a couple of these guys. I'll just drag out the one. Um, this is mostly the... Uh, I believe that might be upper wing, portions of the tail, interior details, planking, control levers, rods, trim wheels, more struts. These are most likely for the um, lower of the two wings, the pontoons, the props. These are four-bladed props. The struts for those big, beautiful Merlins. Excuse me, not Merlins, Rolls Royces. I keep wanting to say Merlin when I say that. And um, looks like at least one of the stabilizers for the top wing there. And a very quick look at the glass, because it won't take but a second. There is literally two options, and I'm not sure which goes on this bird. I, it's my understanding the F2A had the full cockpit, and the F2B had just the single windows. However, I could be wrong. More research required. It's not super clear, but it'll do the job in 70 seconds scale, I think. <clears throat> so anyway, here we have the hull, and as you can see, is there some flash on the inside? Yeah. Is it going to show? Nah. Anyway, these are the upper span wing sections of the, uh, again, that 95 foot uh, wingspan, port and starboard. We don't get to use these two beauties, but uh, the whale tail on this thing in the, the, the rear end of this aircraft down here through these different steps of this uh, beautiful V hull and this this is really kind of the section that makes it a boat because this is just a big beautiful it's one half of a V hull it's stepped down a couple of different times once here probably for the initial center of gravity on the float plane just as it would sit like a boat here for when it's in transition probably more in taxiing speeds and then this last roll off and this step down here for that as the aircraft approaches takeoff speeds from the water that it's able to rotate its nose up without slapping its tail and this is a big beautiful tail on this thing this bird was notoriously known in its uh, first versions the F1 and by the way it is a mix of an H12 Curtis wing and a uh, the double step down deck that was originally prevalent on the uh, F1 Felix Stowe's but they found out <clears throat> that that whole configuration did not have great water characteristics, so they tried to improve upon them. And I believe John Sewell Port, who was the designer of this aircraft, in conjunction 
when he was in America working for Curtis on the development of, I believe, the H... God, I want to say the H-6, but I'm not sure. But anyway, it was a boat uh, plane that was uh, entered in the uh, first transatlantic um, crossing. It was, it was a boat that was developed specifically for that purpose. So, anyway, um, there's not a whole huge amount of detail on here, but with all the rigging, I kind of don't want there to be. I'm not sure if you guys can see these as I rotate the parts back and forth in the camera or not, but some of these strut attachment points, they're very generous in 72nd scale. Yeah, pretty happy about that. So anyway, let's have a quick look at the, dec at the uh, decals and the instruction sheet, and I'll call my little mini review over because I gotta take off for work. I know it's real quick. I'll come back and do some other stuff for you guys later. Um, very simple markings. This is num the aircraft numbered in 4543 and again it was the only one with that uh, upper cupola. Um, a fifth crew member added. So anyway, the uh, tailplane and the rudder stripes and the round L's and that's about all you get. They do seem relatively thin. There is a tiny little bit of carrier film on them, but you know what? The last time I opened a Rodin kit, I think I closed the box and gave it to a friend, and that was many, many, many years ago. But I have to say, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not unimpressed with this kit. Is it going to require some work? Uh huh. Yeah, definitely a long-term project, but a cool project. So let's have a look at the instructions real quick. So a little additional. Uh, information on the aircraft itself. I keep going the wrong way. Sorry, guys. All right, so uh, sprue map, that's pretty much everything we looked at. So again, you see the omissions. Here they omit the uh, the larger of the two cockpits, and I think I'm just going to go with the two front windows. I saw some uh, couple of up, as up close pictures as you can get of that era, and uh, not bad. So anyway, this is the uh, the Rolls-Royce, the Eagle 8s going together along with uh, pontoons, bombs, I'm sorry, not pontoons, sponsons. <clears throat> um, the bombs, the four-bladed props, the Lewis guns and their magazines, how they fit in the cupola. These look like ammo racks, carriers, or upright arms. Here's the construction of the flight deck with some of the related uh, control rigging and trim equipment. In addition, if I'm not mistaken, this was the radio operator's waist gunner upper turret um, dorsal gunner's position back here. So this guy must have been busier than a, a one-armed paper hanger. Not to mention there's fuel tanks down there as well in a very confined space inside the belly of the aircraft. So here we have uh, some of the hull details going on the exterior, a couple of the extra uh, not sure what those parts are, pulleys, maybe trim wheels, the flight deck going in, uh, the top of the whale tail going together with its upright and its horizontals as well as big old ailerons back there and that big old beautiful rudder. This would be the underside of the whale tail going together with its additional step downs uh, for this uh, beautiful V-hole down here and it looks like the rest of the struts for the big beautiful whale tail, the beaching trolley, very nice addition for anyone who's not going to park this thing in a pool of resin. Um, this begins the uh, building of the uh, port and starboard uh, upper wings. Excuse me, these are going to be, these are actually the upper wings because they have the upper stabilizers on it. Here they've split it into a second part where you actually do the bottoms. So they don't put in the intermediary piece for the top wings yet, but here you build the entire bottom section with the intermediary piece, <clears throat> port starboard sides, bombs, sponsons. Then it goes onto the hull with its support structure and the hull that covers the rest of the flight deck up there with the installation or at least the indicator of the installation of that dorsal cupola. There's also one in the nose here, very neat. Um, this will be the uh, the Eagles, the Eagle 8s, going in with their uh, supports and structures. That should be very interesting. <laughs> um, and here's the construction of the uh, fifth member's cupola and how it fits into what's going to eventually be the bottom side of the uh, 
of this metal section down here. This is inverted just for construction purposes to show it, and then you flip it over so it sits here. But as you guys can see, these are very well marked out, and these are these uh, generous attachment points here for both the upper and the lower wings. And it looks like there's a lot of great detail on both the tops and the intermediaries for these for placement of rigging. If not, these posts will be highly indicative of where that rigging goes, and I will probably be stealing some pictures from the Wingnut Wings 132nd Felix Stowe kit because their instructions on how this thing is built is crazy, crazy. But uh, I can't do that level of detail, but I'll try. Hmm. So anyway, here we finish up the aircraft with it loading onto the trolley, the installation of the upper wings, props going on, all those struts. So here's a little bit of the rigging diagram. This would be one of the wings that uh, looks like the right side wing, as well as the top view showing the left. Um, all of these different stabilizers. Some of this is bracing rod, some of this is actually rigging, and some of it's cable. i got to figure all that out. The whale tail, that is not going to be easy, splitting those Ys back there. Hokey smokes. Time to learn some new techniques, Scott. So anyway, here's the uh, the color call-outs for this particular boat. That's the Felix Stowe F2A, number 230 Squadron RAF, based at Felix Stowe, July 1918. A portion of the history of this aircraft... Um, it's, uh, there are no photographs as far as I know and no known results, but it did attack a submarine in late 1918, November. Um, some speculation says that it hit the craft or it hit the craft uh, as it was submerging, but the fate of the crew is unknown. Um, it's also unknown, and I don't know if it was this aircraft's last mission, but this aircraft was forced down uh, due to a fuel pump problem where it sank, and I do not know fate of the crew. But a very interesting aircraft, a very interesting build, and a very interesting opportunity to uh, stick to my guns and do things that <laughs> I was afraid or didn't have the uh, patience to do as a kid, so I'm going to try them now. But anyway, um, i got to split for work soon, so you guys have a great day. I'll get this uploaded as soon as I can and edited. So take care. I'm Scott, S3 Model Works. Later. Good being here, and thank you guys for being here. Bye.